Go ahead and jump into the specs and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so the 750 has, uh, as was mentioned, a lot of really good components that have kind of a, a realistic scale to them. So the 1000 model is kind of like the, the cream of the crop on the Rambo line, uh, but this one is still pretty good. Uh, what you have instead of a really wide tire, this one has a more, if you can believe it, manageable size <laughs> of a four inch wide tire. So this is kind of like this, the, uh, the standard uh, for uh, fat tire bikes and as a result it opens it up to a lot of different options if you wanted to change out the tread pattern for something slick if you wanted to use it on road or if you even wanted to go for a more knobby uh, kind of pattern on here you could do that because there's lots of options for the four inch width this is a 26 inch diameter for the wheel um, and the height but it does go up a little higher because you have that that four inch tall or sorry four inch wide tire so it's a pretty pretty tall spacing uh, so this bike has a minimum stand over height about 29 inches and as a result of that uh, it's a little bit higher than say a typical 26. So if you're used to a 26 inch uh, bicycle, you know, say from the garage or something, it's actually gonna rest a fair amount lower because of that tire. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for the, the uh, standover height that actually is a little bit minimized by this top tube. Because a lot of times the older bicycle styles, they had a top tube that kind of came all the way down in this orientation. Meaning that to straddle the bike, you'd really have to get your leg up really high. Uh, but on this one, they still keep the rigidity by having kind of a, almost like a triangle triangular tube that kind of changes shape and kind of inverts as it goes towards the bottom on this little bend right here. And that's a pretty good detail uh, to have onto the bike. Uh, so this bike is wrapped or kind of painted with this carbon pattern, uh, but the bicycle uh, material is actually aluminum. So it does have some pretty good rigidity to it uh, as an aluminum bike, uh, but there is uh, some, some definite uh, looks to it in the carbon pattern. Uh, this is a pattern that goes all throughout the bike. Uh, it goes from the front of the frame all the way around, even into the battery and the motor casing. So, all right, so coming back up to the middle of the bike, we have the Bafang BBS HD. Now, usually the HDs are capable of a thousand watts of continuous output, but this one, if you can believe it, is actually scaled down to 750. Uh, and they do that, again, for kind of le the legality reasons that we had mentioned prior. Uh, this is combined with a 48 volt, 11.6 amp hour battery pack. And that's pretty good because, you know, with a, a battery, or sorry, with a motor that throws out a lot of power that consumes a battery fairly quickly. So having something a little bit bigger than the standard, kind of like 4810 is what you usually see. But this one has a little bit more to it, a 4811.6, which is nice. And again, this battery is covered in all the carbon fiber, as I kind of talked about a little bit, as well as on the back of the battery. Um, let's go ahead, show you what that looks like. So this is the key. This is a unique key that fits into a little mechanism right here. A lot easier with two hands. And then you twist that, and then you can open up this little lever and pull the battery out. There we go. And the battery, you can hold it up, weighs about nine pounds or so, give or take. And yeah, it's all wrapped all the way around with that carbon fiber uh, kind of uh, pattern uh, that you got there. So it's a pretty good part about it. Let's go ahead and put it back in. You put the bottom in first and then just kind of rock that top part in there. Also with the battery pack, you have a little button right here that'll tell you the kind of an estimate of how much battery power you have left. There's only four little bars on there. Uh, but nonetheless, it'll kind of give you an idea if you want a quick glance without having to turn the entire bike on, which we can do right now. Uh, so this battery, sorry, this bike uses a Bafang system with this nice little LCD color display right here. Let's go ahead and turn it on using the remote switch. So you press and hold the power button and it kind of turns on. Let's see if we can kind of get a good spot without too much glare over here. Uh, so right in the middle, it shows you how fast you're going uh, with kind of like this speedometer motif right there. On the bottom part in this circled area, you have the pedal assist level. And of course, you have the, uh, the rotating uh, metrics right there. It shows you your average speed, max speed, odometer, trip set. It also counts calories, uh, which is kind of a fun thing if you want to goof around with that. And of course, at the top, you have the battery level. Right now, it's 24%. We actually already did the ride portion for this, uh, but it goes up to 100%, of course, and it tells you down to the ones place uh, what you got, and as well as a clock. Uh, but all of this is controlled with the remote switch on the left-hand side of the bike. So that keeps things nice because your hands are riding, you know, generally in this position, and you can kind of sneak your thumbs up there to control the pedal assist level, or if you want to turn on or off 
the uh, the bike itself or of course cycle through the different metrics that it's counting one thing about this bike that is a safety measure that Rambo has kind of programmed in is that when you change pedal assist right now it's in level zero and when you go over here and change it we'll press it a couple times get that up to level two if you wait six seconds this will change from two to zero it'll go back down just like that and it always does that no matter what you put it in we'll put it in number five and they do this for safety reasons uh, Rambo's pretty big on safety they have some good contracts with companies that distribute bikes you know like in sports stores and so it's not going to the typical um, maybe electric bike buyer in a lot of cases and so they definitely want to keep things uh, keep things safe keep things above board if you're used to electric bikes like myself if you've ridden them for you know what feels like a decade or so then this is definitely a feature that kind of seems you know out of the ordinary you know something that you're not exactly used to uh, but I'm sure if you get this bike and this is one of yours then you'd probably get the hang of it you know it's just one of those things you got to get the hang of um, so I think that pretty much does it for the electric system. We talked about the motor, the battery, the display, kind of walk through a little bit of features there. Let's go ahead and jump into the mechanical system and we'll start with the cockpit. I guess one last thing about the electric system, it does have this trigger throttle or paddle or thumb throttle on the right hand side uh, that does have a spring uh, to it to kind of retract to go back into the off position. And they put it on this side of the bike because it feels pretty natural for a lot of Americans to have a throttle on the right hand side. And that's a choice that they made in combination with putting the shifter on the left hand side. So this is the shifter. This is a grips uh, shifter, kind of like uh, some of the old bikes I used to ride. They put it upside down because it's mounted on the opposite side of the bike from what it's normally supposed to be on. And this doesn't really change much. It's not a big deal. Um, you get used to it, you know, similar to the up and down and having that reset for the pedal assist. So, you know, it's just one of those things to look out for. If you're pretty attentive to detail and you want to be able to read this, then yeah, maybe you could even switch if you want to. You could switch them from one side of the bike to the other. Um, but it's something that they set out from the factory this way. Also up on the controls, you have a three finger lever for the hydraulic uh, disc brakes. These are some pretty good disc brakes. I was actually pretty surprised. I've seen some electric bikes that are not unsimilar to this entire setup, and the disc brakes are uh, mechanical, which work fine, but you gotta babysit them quite a bit. With hydraulic disc brakes, you set them and they, they work well for quite a long time. They have some good bite to them. Uh, I like these brakes a lot. I actually have them uh, very similar to my bike at home. And of course, this tubing kind of comes down here to the 180 millimeter rotor that's on the front and also on the back of the bike. These are some good rotors. I, I like them. Uh, they have a fair amount of uh, holes inside of them for heat dissipation. So that way you can kind of go down a hill and kind of you know rest on the brakes quite a bit and you're going to feel okay. You have some axle nuts uh, right here. So you don't have a quick release uh, on the front or the back of this bike. That's one of the choices that they made to kind of keep the price low um, is to kind of keep that, you know, fairly basic. A very common tool will take this off. Do you have a preload adjustment uh, right here on the front shock? Uh, so these front shocks kind of smooth out the ride when you get your hands up here, it'll kind of bounce out a little bit so you don't have too much uh, rattling. So if you do have, you know, some arthritis creeping in, then you'll definitely appreciate those shocks. Maybe even want to loosen them up. Uh, just a little bit. Right in the middle of the bike you have a 36 tooth uh, chain ring that has kind of like this one-sided guard to it that's metal. So that's pretty strong um, right there. It's not going to break <laughs> if you bash it up against something. Uh, 170 millimeter cranks along with a metal well go pedal that has a reflector uh, built into it as well as these little teeth to kind of keep position on the sole of your feet right there. Uh, following the chain all the way back, you have an 11 to 32 tooth cassette in the back with a SRAM X7 uh, derailleur. Uh, and that, of course, goes into the grip shifter up at the front of the bike. All right, so I think that covers all of the mechanical and electrical components. Let's go ahead and jump into the ride footage. Uh, this bike was actually a lot of fun, so let's go ahead.
Anyways, I got to ride this a little bit uh, on some uh, off-road conditions and it did pretty good. I was actually surprised with the grip on these tires. You know, it's it's one thing about fat tires, they're kind of for comfort, but they do a lot for for off-road. That's kind of what they're made for. Uh, yeah, it's great. You know, the uh, the shifter on this thing, it takes a little bit of getting used to because uh, it's on the left-hand side and it's actually mounted upside down. So all the numbers are upside down on the shifter. It still works just fine. It's not a big deal, but you know that if you're looking for something that's kind of clear, then it won't look that way, but it'll feel that way. You know, as you're shifting gears, you'll get the hang of it uh, over a little bit of time, but uh, just don't, don't, uh, don't expect too much from uh, being able to read it. Um, yeah, the wide handlebars give you a really nice stance uh, with the wider tires as well. So I really like that as well. Uh, that's a fun thing about it. You know, the battery life on this thing doesn't seem like uh, all that great. I'm pretty sure you can get an upgrade either from Rambo or perhaps from your local store. Uh, so that's something to look out for because a bike like this has a really strong motor, uh, which is great. And that really strong motor that has a lot of power that, uh, that goes through it. So if you want to use this bike for some off-road adventure, you know, maybe consider getting a second battery or an upgraded battery. Um, but if you're going to use this for commuting and you kind of have your route planned out, you know, you can kind of a tailor make that, you know, adjust it to whatever your needs are. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, another thing about the bike that I wanted to mention is the, the brakes on it. The brakes are pretty good. Uh, I like them a lot. These are brakes that I'm very familiar with. Uh, I've used them more commonly on my own bike uh, back home and I like them a lot. Uh, they work pretty good. They're a two piston hydraulic disc brake um, that couples pretty well. You know, I was a little, you know, I was a little hesitant on it at first, but it actually feels pretty good because uh, this is a much heavier bike going much faster than my bike at home. Uh, so that's something that I was kind of a, you know, kind of a, uh, on, on the lookout for when I started riding it. But honestly, it feels pretty good. I don't mind it at all. So yeah. Okay, here we are on the Rambo R750. Uh, this is a fun, fun little bike so far. Uh, I've got it cranked up all the way to pedal assist level five. We'll go ahead and ride on this dirt road and show you what it's like. <laughs> 